Hey, what's up everybody? Silky Creamy in the house. Back again for another special video. So glad you folks are here. Welcome in, welcome back. As always, um, I really appreciate you uh, stopping in. And uh, if you're new, my name is Silky Creamy and I do uh, very niche review videos of mainly shaving products and uh, uh, skincare products. I take a deep dive, take a look at the uh, label, the packaging, and the product itself, and give you my first impressions of the product, and then we take a look at what the artisan says about the product and kind of learn more about it. And so uh, the goal here is to have a video that uh, uh, gives you a little bit more insight into this product and maybe can help you uh, in your thoughts of whether or not you should pick this up or if you're looking at it and wanting to know more about it. Um, it's gonna give you some additional information so uh for those of you that are returning and are subscribers i appreciate you so much uh you guys are simply sexier and better and you know it and i know it. so let's get right into it folks today we're going to be reviewing praise john from so this is one of their more popular scents um it is something that uh, there's a host of different videos people using it and um but to be honest i don't know what the sentinel is um i don't remember i remember seeing one person do a video on it but i don't remember the sentinels to be honest um but anyway this is a and i know this is a tribute soap um or it's it's, it's inspired by a real life um pilot and i don't know if it was world war ii or vietnam i'm not sure uh we'll find out um as we read from the website but it says praise john from artisan shave soap so you got him smiling giving the thumbs up he's got that old um aviation um uh, cap and goggles here so this is pretty old so i'm thinking actually maybe world war ii you get that military parachute with the cube being dropped down and you've got coconut trees so maybe this is in the pacific so beautiful um you got mountains in the background so we're at ground level looking towards the mountains this looks almost like hawaii too or it could be uh okinawa japan or someplace where maybe the philippines um but yeah this is definitely in the pacific so this is yeah my god is telling me world war ii this is in their CK6 formula. And uh, again, this is one of their rare um, things where they actually have a label on the side. Oh, very cool. What is this? Wow. So you've got a... Um, person holding a spear standing behind a or wearing a large um almost looks like a ceremonial mask it's very interesting wow there's that old i'm not sure what uh type of plane that is dropping the cube Anyway, very cool. Let's take a look. Oh, very nice. Very, very creamy, light colored canyon pour. Nice ribbons, ridges. Let's do our first scent. Oh, this smells nice. I have some wood, but there is, um, I don't know if there's musk in here. There's some citrus. It's a complex scent. Um, it's a bright scent. It's a uh, scent strength. I would give it a six, but it has a bright scent. Wow. Yeah, there's got to be musk and citrus in here. That's kind of the gist I'm getting. 
it's really nice um it does make me think of uh, maybe an old school aftershave i'm gonna read from the website i'm very interested to see what this says um okay so john from scent profile sicilian cedrat black pepper sea salt ambergris royal hawaiian sandalwood i knew it vetiver white musk and animalic musk all right so i'm on there i'm getting better my nose is getting better um so i did get the citrus i did get the musk and i was gonna say wood uh it had that but that's okay so it says, Behold, John Frum and in Formula CK6. John Frum is from the brighter end of the Musk spectrum and truly a game changer in that regard. I promise you, it is a perfect it is, sorry. It is perfect for folks who don't normally feel drawn to musks. John Frum is musk like you have never experienced it before. So let's dig into it, shall we? About the note selection. Some of the scent notes I chose I think are rather unique or at the very least not as common so I thought I would break them down a little in an effort to get you into the vibe I was going for. So Sicilian Cedra is a citrus fruit that is chiefly grown in Sicily. It is one of the original citrus fruits from which all other citrus types develop through natural hybrid speciation or artificial hybridization. The scent is truly magical, zesty, incredibly fresh and light, similar to lemons and limes with lots of sweetness, but softer and more well-rounded without the floor cleaner note so often found in citrus. It wasn't only the scent that stuck out to me, but also its origin. It really seemed thematic when it came to the John from story and worked perfectly as a top note. Ambergris. Uh, a waxily flammable substance, substance of a dull gray or blackish color produced in the digestive system of sperm whales. Freshly produced ambergris has a marine fecal odor. However, with age, it acquires a sweet, dry, amber, woody, mossy fragrance. In dry down, there is a um, cinnamic note, which moves into a smooth, ambery musk note. Ambergris has been very highly valued by perfumers as a fixative that allows the scent to last much longer, although it has been mostly replaced by synthetic ambroxan. Dogs are known to be attracted to the smell of ambergris and are therefore sometimes used by ambergris searchers. I should mention ambergris is one of my favorites and I have used it many times in the past, but not sure how much folks know about it. I thought I'd give a little background. Being that pure ambergris is understandably expensive, I chose to use ambergris tincture and ambergris essence, which is a beautiful reconstitution of ambergris known as ambergris olefic by IFF. White musk or synthetic musks have a clean, smooth, and sweet scent lacking the fecal notes of animal musks. Synthetic musks in a narrow narrower sense are chemicals modeled after the main odorants in animal musk muscone and deer musk civetone in civet and abroxide in ambergris muscone and civetone are macro cyclic ketones ambroxide is a cyclic ether animalic musk to get as close as i could to actual deer musk i chose to use animalid which shares a lot to the, of the same characteristics as standard white musk, but maintains that fecal note. Now, I know that what, what you're thinking, but trust me, that note is used in, a pop, in many a popular historic and famous fragrance. It functions as a supportive actor, and you would never know it was there, but you would if it wasn't. It is that primal element that adds an unmistakable depth to classic musk. The familiar notes. As for the other notes that make up John Frum, I think most of our customers are familiar with them. Black pepper, sea salt, and royal Hawaiian sandalwood. The sea salt was added not only for the relation to the theme of the fragrance, but also because it works so well with the Sicilian Cedra. In combination, they added a real zing and freshness. I think the black pepper can be included in that sentiment with the classic spiciness it delivers, which was a throwback to classic splashes. Sandalwood I just can't stay away from.
but its use wasn't in vain for it truly grounded the entire blend. So who is this John from and why should I praise him? Well, for one, this is probably one of the most epic modern mosques available right now. Mosques seem almost an afterthought to the rest of the world. But as I have mentioned many a time over the last few months, I see a big comeback in effect. I approach John Frum with serious intention, with desire to capture that classic manly musk of yesteryear, the stuff they just don't make anymore or seem to give a damn about. John Frum is more in line with what your grand poppy wore, an instant classic, however more worldly and refined. But back to the question at hand, who is this John Frum? Well, it's not such an easy question to answer. You see, John Frum, for lack of a better descriptor, is a god, at least to the well-meaning natives of the tiny island of Tana, located in the South Pacific. Sure, he looks like a World War II era fighter pilot, but man, does he have the power to make it rain precious cargo over the island. So this is cargo cult. The John Frum religion was born out of a cargo cult in the 1940s. During that time, Japan and the USA were really going at it in the South Pacific. Each had forces occupying different islands that would serve as a pit stop type bases where fighters could refresh and refuel, then take off again and head back into battle. The island of Tana hosted both Japanese forces and then eventually the USA. It is suspected that after the Japanese left the island, a few American soldiers, most likely flyboys, were sent out to do recon and see if the coast was clear on Tana. Not only that, but if they, if it would serve the mission's purpose. All the while, the poor, curious, wide-eyed, uh, uh, wide-eyed islanders watched as these two advanced world superpowers occupied their land. They observed the strange rituals, men in uniform marching with boomsticks, saluting each other, the construction of air traffic towers, the strange signal dance done with flags and flares towards the heavens. All this and more, which when done correctly would clearly lead to the gods raining cargo down from the heavens. It is highly probable that, probable that during these early recon missions, one of the pilots introduced himself to the natives. Hey fellas, I'm John, John from New York, New Jersey, wherever. But all they heard in their shock and amazement was, I am John from. Clearly, this strangely dressed man was a god. Wow. So he keeps going into um, what that is. So you have an idea of basically what this is. Um, what an amazing. So this is actually part one of one of the sagas. And this is something that I'm trying to get into and learn. Um, this is the kind of, um, um, I guess, the, the chronologic um, um, pace or sequence that he uh, releases. So this is a musk scent. It's really nice. Let's go ahead and smell the uh, aftershave. We have a Orbis reducer. Mm, this is a really nice musk. This reminds me of my father and what he would wear out on special occasions. Yeah, it's a really nice musk. He has a really great, I you know, I don't see anybody who can do musk like, like Douglas. Like nobody does musk, only Douglas. And it's so well done and there's so many varieties. And very cool. So again, John Frum, this is a pretty cool musk. I like this. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys um, learned uh, more about John Frum. I now know exactly what John Frum is. Very, very cool. Uh, I can see why there's the cargo drops. And um, yeah, this is a really nice musk scent. As always, I appreciate you guys for, for being here and stopping by. And hope you guys learned a little bit more about John Frum. And as always, take care of one another out there, right? Let's lift each other up. Even strangers, let's lift each other up. Hope you guys have a great evening, great morning, great day, and um, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.